Hello everyone, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be talking all about thermal relief pads on a PCB. Thermal reliefs have been coming up quite a bit in some of the one minute design reviews we've been looking at, and I see it applied in kind of random places and sometimes misapplied on SMD components. I think thermal relief pads are also a bit overused, especially when you start looking at some DFA guidelines on the internet. So we're gonna look at at when is the right time and when is probably the wrong time to apply thermal reliefs on your SMD and through hole pads in your PCB. We're also going to get some input from an expert on the topic. Let's get started. First things first, what are thermal reliefs on pads in a PCB? Well, the thermal relief is very simple. If you take a look at this image, you'll see that the thermal relief is just a spoked connection to a pad in a PCB. That spoked connection could be onto an SMD component or it could be onto the pad for a through hole pin. Now, what is the most cited reason for using thermal reliefs on pads for your components? Well, the number one cited reason is tombstoning. Tombstoning refers to a phenomenon where you have uneven wetting on each side of an SMD component, and the difference in the forces on each side of the component cause the component to shift or even totally stand on its edge. When this occurs, it only solders to one side, and of course it leaves an open circuit. This difference in wetting of the solder on each side of a component is caused by a temperature differential on the two pads. By using a thermal relief on one of the SMD pads, you can equalize the temperature on each side of the component. That would cause wetting and melting of the solder paste at the same time, and then that will cause both sides of the component to bond to the PCB simultaneously. Thermal reliefs can also be used on a through hole pin. The idea is that it confines heat around the pin and ensures that solder can reach the right temperature and it is intended to prevent the formation of a cold joint. So now the question is, how do you apply these in your PCB design software and should you apply them at all? To answer that question, let's take a look at an example PCB and we'll see some instances where we might need them and where we might not need them. Now I'm inside of Altium Designer and what I've done is pulled up a couple of boards that were submitted for our one minute design review and these boards show some usage of thermal reliefs on pads both for SMD components as well as through hole components. So first, let's jump into this first board from Omar Abwaba. This board, if you just look zoomed out, you can already identify a few areas where some thermal reliefs have been applied. Here we have some thermal reliefs on these SMD pads. If you look on this pin header, you can see right here we have thermal relief on this ground pin. And same thing over here for this other PCB. Now this other PCB was submitted by Duck Chu, and if you look around, you'll see some of the same features. Now let's look at all of the different instances where you could use thermal reliefs on pads, both for through hole and for SMD components. So first in Omar's board, we have the one that I think is most obvious and the one that is used most often, which is a thermal relief on a through hole pin. So you can see that right here and that propagates into all of the internal layers where there's a connection as well. Now this has two internal ground layers. So of course we would want to have that same connection through all of those layers where there's ground. And it also goes down to the bottom layer, as you can see here, because we have some uh, ground fill on the bottom layer that then connects back to this pin header. So that's the typical way to use a thermal relief pad uh, is on a through hole pin um, so that it connects to all of your plane layers or in this case, all of your copper pore layers. Normally when this is discussed, it's discussed in terms of plane layers, as I just mentioned. Now here with copper pore, you can use copper pore as a plane. So if you take a look at this layer, right, this copper pore essentially covers everything in the board except for this small rail right here. So it looks a lot like a plane. So I think in that instance, it makes perfect sense to connect this through hole pin to the rest of the ground using this thermal relief. That follows with the standard rule that you would use for through hole pins because these are going to be, of course, most likely hand soldered and that is going to ensure that you can find that heat around that pin so that you get a strong solder joint. What about these other layers? Well, take a look at this layer where we have this 
pretty large pore that basically spans everywhere on the board. You have the same kind of thing here on layer three, right? Layer three, this pore spans pretty much everywhere except for you know some of these large rails scattered around the board. So with this pin being connected to this very large rail, you can see that it basically looks a lot like a plane. So I would then advocate that yes, you should also apply the thermal attach here because this layer is basically acting just like a plane. Up here on the top layer, it's connected to the ground fill and that ground fill spans pretty much everywhere. So you should probably do the same thing here. You can see that probably most of this heat is gonna be confined in this area when it does start leaching away from this pin, but I think it's still a good idea in this case to have that thermal relief pad on this layer. And then same goes for this bottom layer. Here on the bottom layer, it's a little more difficult to make out, but you can see here where this ground region basically extends most of the way around the board and is gonna try and pull heat away from that pin. So same thing, have that thermal attach here on this pin. Let's take a look at Duck's board. Duck Chew's board is a bit more dense. It's only on two layers. And if we zoom in, we can see some thermal attaches on this board. Because of the size of thermal attach that he used, it's actually not so obvious. But let's put this in single layer mode. And once we put this in single layer mode, we can actually see where those thermal attaches are. Here, this thermal attach is actually pretty small. And some of these elements as far as, you know, what to do with these teardrops and what to do with these thermal attaches didn't make it into the full one minute design review um, because of course we only have one minute. But you can see here, there is in fact a thermal attach here on these pins. And if we just zoom out, we can actually see that even though we don't have a big copper pore connection on the top layer, we do on the bottom layer. So I think it's also warranted to use the thermal attach on this layer and on the top layer for these through hole pins because this copper pore on this layer looks a lot like a plane. So I think this brings us to our first rule. Whenever you're connecting to a plane with a through hole pin, just use the thermal attach. When you're connecting to a large copper pore, if the copper pore looks a lot like a plane, then also use the thermal attach. Now I would note here in this board that these uh, clearances between the polygon pour here at the edge of the pad are actually really small. We have 10 mils all the way over to here. So this is probably just a couple of mils. Let me turn off my snap and see here we can get a better measurement. So here, if we actually just measure right at the edge of the polygon over to the edge of the pad, we can see that it's a four mil clearance. So that's probably pretty close to the etching limit for standard fabrication, wherever you're gonna put this board into production. If you are gonna use this thermal attach like this, I would advise increasing this clearance. There's really no need to go all the way down to your etch limit on this clearance for this thermal attach. Here you also see that there are teardrops used. You actually can use teardrops on thermal attach. There's nothing wrong with that. I would just advise increasing that clearance here from four mils to maybe something like 10 mils. Now let's take a look at Omar's board. So if we go back to Omar's board and we zoom in to a couple areas in the board, we can see where there are some thermal attaches on SMD components. You can see one right here for this resistor. You can see another one right here for this resistor, so on and so forth. So these thermal attaches onto these pads are being attached to ground pour on the top layer that spans reasonably far away from these components. So you can see the same thing over here when we look at these components. Now these components also have it, and you can see that this region of copper expands pretty far beyond those components. This copper pour on this layer doesn't look like a plain layer in the sense that we see on layer two. It looks pretty similar. So I would say because this is such a large piece of copper pour that it's probably a good idea to include the thermal attaches on those connections to this copper pour. I don't see anything wrong with that. If you put them on, it's not going to cause such a problem in assembly. Um, it's when you leave them off that you do create that risk of tombstoning. Now here we have 0603 uh, case size on these components. Um, if we had something smaller, like let's say 0201, if we were going that small, we would probably have a higher risk of tombstoning. And so it may be a better idea to uh, use a thermal attach on those smaller components. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that we are applying the thermal attach here to this big ground region because this is a big piece of polygon. But nearby, what do we see? Well, over here in this region, we see that we have some pads connecting directly to copper pore, but we don't have the thermal attach. 
So why is that? I think this is a good rule of thumb here, which illustrates the opposite of what we've been talking about, which is that if the copper pore is very small, then don't worry yourself with applying a thermal attach. Now, if you were to create a design rule that, let's say, enforced a relief connect everywhere in your PCB, such as you have here with this polygon connect rule, what would happen? Well, in this case, when I pour the polygon, you see here that the relief connect clearance actually clears out all of this copper here. So you would then have to go back and basically connect all of these with a trace, or you would have to draw in a larger region of copper, one of the two. You have to be careful with applying a blanket rule like that because it may clear out this copper as we see right here. We also see that down here, it kind of modifies our copper connections and it forces some of that polygon to clear out. The other thing that it does is it applies thermal relief here on a via where I think it's not actually necessary. So I'll get more into the vias aspect here in just a moment. But here with this small pore, you can see it clears it out. And as we zoom out, we see that we have these thermal attaches being applied in places where I really don't think it makes any sense. You can also see here that when we apply that blanket rule, we have these really odd kind of spoked connections going all over the place to all of these different vias. And what it ends up doing is it ends up screwing with these polygon pores onto these components. And you can see here, it's just been totally cleared out. We no longer have that connection. You would then have to go back and route these as traces manually. This comes to our second rule. If you have a small copper pore, you don't wanna use that thermal connect because as we see here, some of these clearances on that thermal connect will then force some of that copper to be cleared out. And of course, your polygon pore could disappear in that case. Now, if we just look over here at this component, we can really see that this is the case with this integrated circuit. All of these weird kind of shapes that you see connecting all of these pads, those are all from that clearance enforcement in that polygon connect rule. And you can see here that it totally clears out all of the space around these ground pads. That rule is being applied as a blanket rule to all SMD pads. And that's why it's clearing out all of this copper around these pads for these ground pins. So this is yet another reason that we don't want to apply that blanket rule. And I think in general, when we have an integrated circuit like this, where we have this really close spacing between pins, we wouldn't want to apply a polygon connect rule anyways. That polygon connect rule is gonna do the exact same thing. Even if we only apply it to these integrated circuits, it's gonna then force a clearance around here that removes all of this copper. And now, as you can see, we don't have anything connected to anything. Now, if we start a brand new PCB, of course, there are always going to be some default design rules that are enforced in the PCB. So if I create this new PCB, I go into design and rules, and I look at the polygon connect default rule, you can see here that in the default rule, it is going to apply a relief connect everywhere. Highly advise that you change this, at least change the parameters on this relief, or just set it to direct and then go through and manually select the pads where you want to apply the relief. Same thing applies here with plane connect here on the plane connect by default, it is going to apply the relief connect. I think this is just fine for through hole pins. So you, what you can do is you can create a custom query and you can do this by component footprint. You can do this by component class, um, or you can do it by pin type, but I would advise changing this from the default rule so that you only apply those reliefs exactly where you want them. So let's summarize what we've learned. When we have a through hole connection to a plane, it is generally a good idea to include the thermal relief on that pin connection. When we have a through hole or SMD connection to a very large copper pore that looks a lot like a plane, we should also probably use the thermal pad on that connection. What about smaller copper pores that don't look like plane layers? Well, if you have smaller copper pores that are basically being used, for example, as rails, I think it's a judgment call. Sometimes your assembler might demand that you put a thermal relief on certain pads on certain copper pores just due to their size. Sometimes you can get away with not using it. I think it's more likely that you will get away with not using the thermal pad when you're doing everything through reflow soldering. If you're doing things in hand soldering, Generally, it's a good idea to include those thermal connections probably on all of your copper pore connections because otherwise you're gonna have to crank up your soldering iron very hot in order to get a reliable connection.
Finally, make sure to check out that podcast with Chris Shea. She's a treasure trove of information on PCB assembly, and you will learn a lot about all sorts of assembly defects in that podcast episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section, and last but not least, don't forget to call your assembler, folks. Yeah. <laughs>